In this video, we're going to break down reverse engineering this gear and gear shaft as an entire unit. And uh, one of the things that we're going to do in this video is we're actually going to be working off of a partial scan. So we're going to slow this process down again and just walk through a step by step since this is a pretty simple part to do. And you'll notice that we have one uh, large portion of the sections of these gears missing on this part. However, since there's a repeating surface, we have plenty of geometry here to make our part nice and accurate. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create a few primitives uh, on our part. We're going to define our center axis based off of that large portion of the shaft. And then we're going to go ahead and build a reference plane at the bottom portion of this part. And finally, we'll go ahead and try and get one more axis in here if we can. Uh, we don't have a lot of geometry to work with here, but we'll go ahead and just do a mesh selection and see what we can pull in. And it looks like we're going to need to get a little bit more geometry to define that cylinder axis. So we'll go ahead and just brush select a little bit more data. And it looks like we've got uh, a good enough axis, at least for indexing this part uh, in our uh, alignment system. So now we'll go ahead and just create that last piece of geometry, move over to our alignment tab and select our center axis, then our bottom plane, and then that secondary axis as our uh, indexing point and go ahead and move this part inside of SOLIDWORKS with the Align Mesh tool. So now you can see we've got our part aligned to our front, top, and right planes. So we'll go ahead and start uh, sketching out some basic components of this part. And the first thing that we'll go ahead and do is our shaft. Uh, but we'll first just go ahead and look around the part a little bit get an idea of what it is we want to uh, build out and order. And we'll pick on the shaft first, then we'll move down into the gear itself, and then we'll go ahead and uh, worry about the small features at the top of the part. So we create a cross section through that shaft and highlight that circle to create the uh, diameter of the shaft itself. We lock it into the coordinate system. And this is the point in this full process of reverse engineering the pump housing where we're going to start putting some precision in. So we go ahead and change that uh, diameter to 0.5 inches. And we notice that that's just a little bit oversized. So we're gonna go ahead and bring it down to 0.495, which will help in our entire assembly to give a little bit of clearance. And we know now that for the pump itself, we're going to want to make those half inch uh, diameter bores. So now we can move on to just extending out the shaft for its entire length. And we're going to leave it at 3.855 inches, adjust it. And that seems to be a little short. So we'll go ahead and put it at 3.86 and we will call that shaft completed. So now we can move on to the gear section. And for this part, to get as much accuracy as possible, we'll go ahead and create some stacked sections here. And these stacked sections are just gonna give us multiple cross sections through the same profile uh, so we can see any sort of deviation. And that becomes really important for us here when we choose which one of these profiles we're going to uh, reverse engineer off of. So to get started with that, we'll first create a circle that goes all the way around the outside of our gear. And we'll just double check on a few of these positions to make sure that everything's lining up properly and we have our axis in the correct position. And now we're just going to look and see which one of these profiles we want to use for reverse engineering, reverse engineering the basic shape of this gear. So we're going to go ahead and pick this one. It seems to be the cleanest uh, throughout all of those cross sections. And we'll simply just start 
putting our geometry into place. We're going to start with three circles here. Uh, one for the uh, very innermost portion and then the two sides. And we can see that we've got a little bit of geometry left over that we'll be able to clean up with a fillet here in just a few moments. So now that we've got this basic geometry, let's go ahead and start taking some measurements. And we can see that we've got 0.776 on our first circle. And for our second one, it's 0.841. So there's a very large discrepancy between these two parts. And this gear could be slightly worn. Uh, these are also very small portions of a large radius. So we're going to want to make these equal, but to do that, we're probably going to have to uh, move these parts around and get a little bit better visualization of what the actual dimension of these circles should be. So we'll start with 0 0.80 and we'll go ahead and just move these circles back into position and take a look at them. We can see the bottom one fits well, but the top one uh, is just a little bit smaller than it should be or the circle's a little bit larger, rather. Uh, so we'll go ahead and just start throwing some dimensions in to make sure everything's where it should be. And then at that point, we can go ahead and really change these diameters uh, if need be and try to figure out exactly what those numbers should be. So we'll dimension out all three of these circles to one another, making sure that we have equal spacing uh, to the center axis as well as equal spacing to that small central circle of the part. And now as we start dimensioning, we can see that the part's starting to uh, get pulled in tighter with that 0 0.80 value. So it looks like we're probably not going to need to change that, uh, but we'll finish dimensioning out this part and just make sure. So now that we have everything pretty well defined, We'll go ahead and put a value of 0.46 for the distance uh, between the center axes of the large circles to the small circles. And we'll just double check our lines. And it looks like that 0 0.80 value was good. So now we can just move on to trimming off the areas of this geometry that we don't need. And once we have all of this geometry cleaned up the way that we want it, we'll go ahead and... Uh, build out our fillets, see if we can achieve those pieces of geometry with fillets, which it looks like we can at a 0 0.20 inch fillet. So now uh, it becomes really simple to just mirror out our part. We did close off these lines initially. Uh, however, as you'll see here, once we mirror out the part, we didn't even need to do that. That was just a simple uh, excess step that could have been avoided. And once we pattern out our entire part, we go ahead and deselect those lines because we realize now that we probably don't even need that to build out the rest of this profile, which it looks like we don't. So we can just trim away all of this excess data that we don't need. And at this point now we have the basic shape of our gear that we can go ahead and extrude. And it's fully dimensioned out and accurate. And we know that this... Uh, gear shaft as well as the gear itself are all set exactly where we want them to be on our final part. So we'll finish this off just by extruding the shaft out. We can see it's got a value of 1.48. So we're going to go ahead and change that to an inch and a half. And now we can go ahead and move on to uh, working on the top portion of this part. So to do that, we already have our planes set up. And we can simply just come in and start pulling out the cross sections of our planes and start dimensioning out that large cut at the top of this shaft. So to do that, we'll just build out a plane that's central through the axis of our part, uh, get that cross section. And for this part, it's going to be our top plane. And we can just fit in the basic sketch entities that we need with that circle and then two lines. Go ahead and work with our SOLIDWORKS sketch tools now that we have those basic entities in place. To make this as precise as possible, we'll go ahead and run a center line down the shaft of that part. We'll go ahead and slightly move that circle to make sure that it is coinciding 
with the center axis of the part. And we'll go ahead and dimension out these two lines, putting them at exact distances from our center line because now we're starting to implement the precision into these parts and not just doing our rough drafting. So at this point, we can simply just trim everything out together and go ahead and use our extrude cut tool to extrude this cut out of our shaft. And we'll use a, a mid selection to make that happen as easily as possible. And now we can go ahead and move on to the final step of building out the shot. Now we can go ahead and move on to the final step in building out this gear and shaft, uh, which is cutting out this small groove at the top portion of our part. So to do this, we're actually going to use a uh, feature of mesh to surface, which is a revolved cross section. Uh, so we're going to select the axis of our part. And now that we have that axis selected, we have the option inside of our cross section tool to uh, rotate our sections around the axis of the part instead of through a plane, which gives us a really nice, clean, accurate profile to work off of because we're taking multiple sections of a part that has some wear and damage to it. So we can see all of those sections are stacked up on that top groove portion. So we can go ahead back to our top plane and uh, sketch out that profile for our revolve. So we'll start again with our fit sketch entities tool. We can see that that part does look like it's got a little bit of a circular uh, shape to it, but we know that should just be a straight line. So we're just gonna leave it as it should be. We've got our three main angles here. Again, going back to the precision side of things, we want to get these probably best fit as center to those positions as possible, as well as we're gonna go ahead and start finding our angles. So this one needs to be 140 degrees. And we know that this angle right here probably should be right at around 120 degrees. So now that we have our angles set and our positions set, we'll go ahead and uh, draw one more line in here and then trim everything together. So we have our nice cutting tool here to go ahead and revolve as a cut around the outside of our part. So we'll simply just do a revolution here. And once that's done, now we have our completed part and we'll go ahead and move into the assembly portion of this process where we'll start putting some of these pieces together.